What's good, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave, and we are back with some more boxing news. Jerron Boots Ennis officially signs the Matchroom Boxing. How do I know it's official? Well, he posted it on his own social media. It's on his Instagram. Um, congratulations to him. I don't know if this is bad news. I don't know if this is good news. I don't know if this is great news, but we'll we'll see. But it's official because he posted it. All right. Um. Now, we know that he was signed with Showtime exclusively, and we know that Showtime is no longer with boxing, okay? And he's not with the PBC. So, this is pretty much, I mean, in my opinion, it's at least a good signing. You know, I think there's some negativity that comes with it, but I don't think, no matter where you go, you know, when it comes to boxing... It really depends on where you're at and what fighters is in that division. You know, there are certain divisions that are heavily influenced by a certain promoter or by a certain network. We already know that. And when it comes to the welterweight division and even the super welterweight division, 154, they have a lot of PBC fighters over there. You know, but a lot of those fighters haven't really been active, you know, and... um there's still a lot of other fighters that's available, you know, if he stays at welterweight because currently he's the IBF champ at welterweight. So he has options. And Eddie Hearn, you know, one of the biggest promoters out here. Uh, one thing about Eddie that I can say that I like is that at least his fighters for the most part are pretty damn active. You know, and I can't say the same for a lot of fighters that were with showtime before or that's um that was with the pbc now we know pbc is back and they're just now having or they recently first they had their first card with amazon prime all right but there's not a lot of there's not a, there's so many fighters that's been on a bench for a long time that we haven't heard from in a, in a minute um imante stanionis who's a, a welterweight as well that's with the pbc He's a fighter that hasn't fought in two years, you know, and he was coming off one of his best career wins. And uh, he was supposed to fight Virgil Ortiz, you know, and part of that is not really the PBC's fault. But um, there's a lot of fighters that's just overall, there's a lot of inactive fighters over there. And um, part of it is because the Showtime, uh, you know, the, the uh, relationship with Showtime was coming to a close. So now that Boots is over there with the zone, with Matchroom, with Eddie Hearn, what can we re like really expect? Well, first thought was Connor Ben. Connor Ben has done some talking. You know, Boots has been willing to say, you know, he's been saying he's willing to fight Connor Ben. We know Connor Ben is a big star out in the UK, but he's not licensed to fight in the UK at this moment. You know, he's been fighting in America, all right, against kind of like some unknown names just to stay busy so that is an option there you know plus there are other fighters that's over there and there's other fighters that's not with the pbc and showtime um that are available you know uh, i pulled up box rec and i know all the fighters are not here and i know a lot of people were expecting boost to fight like a cody crowley or maybe a mario barrios and those are these are good fights but they're not great fights you know these are good fights not great with the PBC, but we know PBC had Keith Thurman. Um, they have Errol Spence. You know, Errol is trying to move up to 154. Um, we know Crawford is a free agent. We don't even know who he is fighting next, most likely someone at 154. And he's not with the PBC as well. So when you look at the fighters that are non-PBC, that these guys can float around and go wherever the money is at, um, we got uh, Santion, who's coming off of the big win, the stoppage win against Alexis Rocha. And I believe he is with Golden Boy. You know, I don't know if he's exclusive to Golden Boy, but I know he fought on a Golden Boy card against Alexis Rocha. So you got Giovanni Santion. That is a possibility. You got Conor Ben, like I said before. Um, you got David Avenition, uh, who's also an excellent fighter. Uh, I know people try to shut him down. Uh, because, you know, they didn't care for him fighting Bud, but he is a very, very good fighter. Um, you got Stan uh, Cavalaskis that's still out there. Uh, you got Alexis Rochas that's still out there, you know what I mean? Um, 
And we can we can keep going down, but these are the most notable notable names that is in the welterweight division. And it's not much, you know. He's already beaten Royman Villa. All right, so there's not many options. All right, but there are options out there if he can't get in the ring with a PBC fighter. All right, and I think at 154, if he's gonna go up at some point. If he decides to go up there, it, even, it, it becomes even more difficult because I think there are better options up at 154 right now. Uh, because, again, uh, 147 for years was probably the most popular division. I can't really say that now because a lot of guys got older, retired, like Porter, Tim Bradley, Kel Brook, you know, Amir Khan. All of those guys are kind of gone, you know, or on their way out. Keith Thurman's on his way out. Um, but yeah, at 154 is way better options, but there's a many, many PPC fighters. You got Charlo, Fedora, Tim Zhu, uh, you know, Erickson Lubin, uh, you know, this goes on and on and on. You know, you got Brian Mendoza, uh, Jesus Rom, Rom, uh, Ramos. So you, there's, there's a lot of fighters that's over there that's on the PBC end as well. Some I didn't even name. And the majority at 154 is PBC. And, you know, PBC is not going to look to do any favors, you know. I mean, being that he used to fight on the Showtime, you know, I don't know if they, you know, there was rumors that he was they were trying to sign him. I don't know what the deal is, but he's with Matchroom, and they're not going to be doing any favors for Gerard Ennis to get him in a ring with one of their fighters, um, you know, unless it was a great opportunity for them. And... Um, we just got to stick and just be realistic here. And this is what makes it a good deal. I think the good thing about him being with Matchroom is that he's going to stay active. I think that's the best part about it. You know, I don't think he's been active enough. You know, I think his best years, he should at least be fighting three times, two, if not, not two, three times, if not three, two times a year. You know, he did fight twice. Um, in 2023, you know, but it one was against a guy that really wasn't uh, trying to engage in Karen, and it was probably his worst showing. And one was against Roman Villa, which was a good win. Um, but that's all we got, and and that fight was in July. You know, he had two early fights in 2023, and he's been out since, and we're in April already, so. He hasn't really been that active. He only fought Castillo Clayton once, I mean, one fight in 2022, and he stopped them in two rounds. So he's not really that active, all right? Fought a couple times in 2021, which was good, but up into, since 2021, he hasn't been. He's only had three fights, all right? And, and we're almost halfway through this year. So... I think the good thing is he gets signed by Matchroom and he gets in the ring and, and, and gets put on. Hopefully, Eddie just puts him out on as many cards as possible. You know, some of those names I brought up, they may not be the biggest names or the biggest challenges, but get him in the ring. You know, try to squeeze him in, in there for at least twice this year, at least twice this year. And also, those are the connections with Turkey Alashik. Um Maybe put him on some of those undercards out there for some of these cards. There's a lot of cards coming up, heavyweight cards coming up. Throw him on some of these undercards. Keep him active, you know, and that's one good thing about signing with Eddie right now. You know, if you're Eddie, if you're Frank, there's a good chance where you can get thrown on uh, some sort of uh, undercard, all right? And you never know, you know, but his options are not as good as they once were because at 154. And I don't know a lot of people are saying, Bud should fight him, Bud should fight him, Bud should fight him. And I'm one of those people, like, I want to see that fight, you know, but I understand Bud because he wants to push on, continue his legacy, move up to 154 and become undisputed for he could be a three division one undisputed champ in the four belt era. So I think that should be the priority. But if he were to stay at 147, I've been consistently saying, like, fight Jerron Ennis um, because that is a good matchup, man. This is a matchup I want to see, and it's a harder matchup to to predict. You know, I think Bud would win, but 
I'm not really sure, you know. I'm not as sure as I was with Errol Spence leading him to that fight. You know, Jerron can do a lot of things in there, you know, and he's bigger. And um, I think he's not as uh, predictable as Errol Spence, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think Jerron Ennis has is, is got a lot more off to offer than Errol Spence, in my opinion, even though he hasn't been proven. But I'm talking about stylistically. I think he's a little bit more dangerous for a guy like Bud because Jerron is a lot more unorthodox. Uh, but you never know, like, I think Crawford is trying to push for his legacy, but I know, I know Crawford is willing to take a big fight for the money, you know, and being at 154, the plan was to fight Jamel, Jamel no longer has the belts, Jamel is not active right now, Jamel is coming off a loss to Canelo, the buzz for that fight is, is gone, and now Tim Zhu, who, Seemed to be the boogeyman at 154 for a minute now. He just lost as well. And the other options that are available are good options for Crawford, but they're not named opponents. You know, Madrimov is not a named guy. Uh, Bakram, you know, all these other guys. I mean, even Fandor. Like, Fandor would probably be the best fight, but we don't even know if that fight is going to happen because, you know, Fandor is over with the PBC, and unless Crawford signs with them, Probably for a multi-fight deal. He's probably not going to get any real fights over there. So I just don't know what his options are. But, I, you know, Eddie, at the very least, if he can't absolutely get Jerron Ennis to fight some of these guys, the bigger names at 147 or at 154, at the very least, Eddie can probably keep him active, you know, and possibly get him more exposure by fighting on these big Saudi cars, or at least maybe not more exposure, exposure, but more, um, more money by getting him to fight on these um, Saudi cards. You know what I mean? Or maybe potentially be on this five by five or future cards against uh, Queensberry uh, promotions. You know what I mean? Or it'll be easier to make a fight with Golden Boy. You know, if Golden Boy is willing to put him in the ring with one of their fighters. Um, they're all on the zone, you know, so there are going to be options available. Um, definitely not many with the PBC probably at this point, but there are other options available. And, you know, when it comes to the PBC still, was Cody Crowley really a great fight? It was a good fight. It was a good opponent, but everybody's pushing Ennis to fight Crawford. Or at one point they was pushing him to fight Virgil Ortiz Jr., who's another option. But he's over with Golden Boy. And I don't think Golden Boy would put him, just based on the opponents that they put Virgil with right now because of his health issues, I don't think they're willing to take that risk uh, against a fighter that's not a Golden Boy fighter. You know, but at the same time, you know, um, going back to my point, at least the guy is going to stay active. You know, and the PBC options weren't that great. There's a lot of fighters over there, but at 147, a lot of the top big names are, are no longer fighting. You know what I mean? So, you know, Cody Crowley, solid fight, not a great one. Um, Who else is there? Uh, Mario Barrios, a good fight, not a great one. You know, Keith Thurman wasn't going to get in the ring with this kid unless they threw... A crazy amount of money to fight. You know what I mean? Um, there's not really that many options over there at 147 with the PBC neither. You know? Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm happy for him. I, I, I wish him luck. Again, I hope he at least get in the ring twice this year. But um, we just got to wait and see how this all plays out, all right? Anyway, I'm out of here. Y'all have a good day, man. Um, I'll definitely talk more about this on a live but I got to get on out of here, man. Y'all have a good day. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.